Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Terry Crow, and I have the honor of serving as the mayor of University City. I am joined here today by City Manager Gregory Rose. Uh, each time we do one of our update addresses, it seems that our community and our country has faced yet another tragedy. On May 25th, George Floyd was murdered by having a knee placed on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. As Wesley Morris reported in the New York Times, George Floyd's death is a 21st century death. It is a 20th century death. It is a 19th century death, and it is an 18th century death. He died a death that has been died for four centuries. The world is finally listening. Maybe there is an opening. People may not understand what they are getting wrong, but maybe, just maybe, they are willing to listen and learn. And that's the part that must give us hope. Many peaceful protests have followed. As Andre Birch reported in the Times, on any given day, the protesters spill out onto the streets, driven by fury. They march, they kneel, they sing, they cry, they pray, they light candles, they chant and shout urgent voices muffled behind masks. They block freeways and bridges and fill public spaces. They press their bodies into hot asphalt, silently breathing for eight minutes and 46 seconds. They do all of this beneath the watchful gaze of uniformed police officers standing sentry nearby. Violence against African Americans is a familiar song. We know their names. Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, Sandra Bland, and Eric Garner who uttered the same plea as George Floyd. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Yet again on June the 12th, Rayshard Brooks was shot in the back twice in Atlanta. Since the time of George Floyd's murder several weeks ago, the St. Louis region has seen dozens of protests. In University City, we've had at least six demonstrations, all of which have been, for the most part, peaceful. Some of the protests have had as many as 2,000 attendees who have marched through our streets of University City. We've seen many, seen many boarded up businesses, yet they have become painted with beautiful murals, a show of unity and of hope. We know that we are facing uncertain times, both with civil unrest and continued cases of COVID-19. We want to protect the rights of our citizens to protest and have their voice heard. But we also do not condone violence of any kind. This is a time for our community to come together, have tough conversations, and ask questions. We can do this peacefully and thoughtfully, and we will all be better for it. I want to express my appreciation to all of the protesters who have come to our city. Your protests have been organized and they have been peaceful. I'd like to express my appreciation to our residents who not only welcomed the protesters, but at many times joined in. I also want to show my appreciation to our police force who welcomed the protesters and professionally and peacefully guided them through our community. When the protests first began happening, the city council asked the city manager and the police chief to update us on our police protocols. We were following up on questions and comments from citizens that came from the eight can't wait questions and came from comments and suggestions made by former President Obama. Chief Hampton gave us a, an update a few weeks ago talking about all of the items on the eight can't wait list, and in particular, de-escalation, chokehold bans, duty to intervene, and diversity training. We are very pleased with how this, the, uni the University City Police Department has addressed all of these policies. We also recognize that we can always do better, and we can always reform and improve. Our next step 
is to get body cameras and determine protocols for our police officers that protect our citizens and protect our police officers as well. So to Chief Hampton, I want to say I hope that you will pass along to all of the members of our police force, thank you for the job you have done in keeping our community safe and keeping our officers safe as well. I now want to turn briefly to COVID. You know, as a community, we sense your frustration at times. We get it. We continue to balance the safety of you, our residents, and our employees with your desire to have greater freedom and more activities for you and your family. Even though we have had a very measured response and opening of our city, I think many of you realize that we have a significant number of our employees who have become ill, who have tested positive. We have an obligation to you and we have an obligation to our employees to keep everyone safe. We are trying our best to act in everyone's best interest based on the data that has been provided to us. I will say what I have said before. I hope that you will grant us grace during this time as we are traveling through these uncharted waters. We appreciate your patience, even though we know we may try it at times. This past Monday, the City Council had a meeting that was both a public hearing and a council discussion on the 2021 budget. As many of you have probably surmised, that is a budget that will be greatly in flux. Though a budget has been submitted, it was submitted on data prior to our shutdown. Our city manager continues to keep us up to date. We realize we will have more budget amendments than we have probably ever had before. We try to respond to new data from the state and from the county, particularly regarding sales taxes, because that is such a significant part of our business. I know that my colleagues on city council join me in thanking our city manager for the very tough and difficult decisions that he made at the beginning of this pandemic where he was forced to furlough employees and to eliminate positions. Yet that has probably made this a little bit more palatable for our citizens and for our community. I also want to announce that the council and I will be working with the city manager and his staff to review streets, playgrounds, and parks in order to determine whether, based upon your input, our community input, they should be renamed to reflect the values of the diverse community that we live in, University City. This coming Monday night, we will have yet another Zoom council meeting. I hope that you will join in, if you can, by video. We will be uh, taking a, having a discussion on the budget and likely taking a vote on it. We will also welcome our newest member of council, Alita Klein, who was recently elected from the second ward. Uh, we intend to have her sworn in as a new member of council Monday evening. And finally, I would like to take a moment during this turbulent time, uh, actually a week where we remember both the Pulse Massacre in Orlando that was five years ago and the Charleston Nine uh, that happened as well. This has been a week of remembrance, yet at the same point in time, uh, our Supreme Court surprised all of us this week. I am standing in City Hall, a building that if you will drive by at night, you will see that it is bathed in rainbow lights uh, in support of Pride Month for the LGBT community. And this past Monday, I think uh, it, would, it is not an understatement to say that the Supreme Court surprised all of us by barring discrimination based upon sexual orientation or identity. No longer can you be married on Sunday and fired on Monday. Uh, truly a change has occurred. So to all of you in the midst of this turmoil, I thank you for your patience with us. I hope that you will continue to provide us with suggestions as to ways that we can improve. And as I turn the program over to the city manager, I want to end by saying my remarks are right at about eight minutes and 46 seconds. Thank you. Mayor, thank you and, and thank the uh, council and the uh, uh, citizens for allowing me to provide this uh, update. 
We are continuing to provide services to our residents under a state of emergency declaration, which actually went into effect in March of this year. This week, we learned just how contagious the coronavirus is, as a total of 13 of our employees have now tested positive for the virus, 12 within the past nine days. In addition to the 13 employees that have tested positive, seven additional employees are quarantined because of their exposure. Our thoughts and prayers are with our employees and their families in what must be a difficult time for them. Although we are uncertain about the activities our employees were engaged in when each contracted the virus, out of an abundance of caution, we have increased cleaning for all of our facilities. Those two facilities that house the bulk of the employees that tested positive have received an additional cleaning and a deep cleaning. We are working with St. Louis County Health Department to trace the employees' activities and to alert those individuals that may have been in contact with any employee that has tested positive. When the coronavirus first became an emergency here in the United States, we took early steps to minimize the impact to our employees by establishing protocols that are consistent with the CDC and St. Louis County Health Department guidelines. We issued masks to all of our employees, implemented social distancing measures, and encouraged each employee to clean their workspace and to wash their hands frequently. We are now taking additional steps to strengthen our protocols by requiring all masks be worn in the presence of an employee or a resident. I've authorized any employee that is wanting to have a test performed that they can have that test performed during work hours. COVID-19 has had a major impact on our organization and our community from both a financial and a personal perspective. Difficult decisions needed to be made relative to the number of employees that we could afford as our revenues declined facilities to close in an effort to keep our community and employees safe, and balancing an individual's right to freedom of speech with ensuring each was protected in exercising that right. I want to commend all of our employees for the work that they are doing under extremely difficult circumstances. The coronavirus has not significantly impacted our ability to provide critical services such as police, fire, and solid waste collections to our community. Our parks and trails, tennis courts, and golf course are all open for use. I have directed Parks, Recreation, and Forestry Director Darren Dunkel to develop a plan for opening Centennial Commons and allowing children's skills development programs that comply with St. Louis County Health Department guidelines. We are opening facilities we believe we can effectively manage, comply with CDC and St. Louis County Health guidelines, and keep our employees and our residents safe. We will not open Heman Park Pool this year because we cannot do so in a manner where we are reasonably certain that the lifeguard and our customers are safe. In closing, I simply want to thank you uh, for the opportunity to provide this update. Please wash your hands vigorously and often. Wear a mask, social distance, and please stay at home if at all possible. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.